Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back to Collider Mailbag. It's a show where you guys have submitted some questions and we just kind of sit around on the weekend here and talk about the things that you're wondering about in the movie space. Joining me on Mailbag, as always, it's the modest assassin himself, Dennis Zhang. What's up, Dennis? I'm I'm super excited because hockey playoffs have started. Uh-oh. And like I already don't have enough time, now I'm going to have even less time. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to pull a schnep here. If you would have told me that the season for hockey was just starting, uh, I would have believed you. Uh, next to me, it's Wendy Lee. Hello, Wendy. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm doing good. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. All right, here we go. So let's get into the things that you guys have been. Oh, I'm over here now. How you guys have <laughs> been. And now I'm over here. What are you doing? Stop that. Uh, <laughs> what have you been asking? Jonathan, I hate you. Let's go. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right. Matt D writes, hi, Collider crew. Love your show each day. Disney allowing unusually early screenings and reviews of Captain America Civil War makes me wonder if they moved them up to take advantage of the poor perception of Batman v Superman and to make a firm contrast to that film. With such good reviews for Captain America, average superhero moviegoers who haven't seen Batman v Superman yet may just wait a few weeks more, uh, a few weeks for a more promising movie. What do you think? I don't think it's out of the question. I think it's interesting, but I don't think they really based this off of uh, Batman v Superman reception. It's interesting, uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think what happened was uh, that they knew, first of all, it's coming out a little earlier in European countries, so they want to let critics see it. But I also think they have a lot of confidence in this movie. We talked about this on Mailbag on Thursday, and it is a... It's it's just they they're pushing it out there because they want they, they're confident in what they have and they should we all we all really love the movie and it's a movie that should be ex fans are going to get excited they want fans to talk about it they want critics to talk about it and is this is pretty it's pretty early to put a movie review out this early but I don't know it, whether or not it was a response to the Batman v Superman criticism I think. For, no matter what, even if it came out a week earlier, it's still going to overshadow Batman v Superman because it was already done and people are like, ah, I saw that movie already. Now it's time for me to go see Civil War. But what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't think it has anything to do with Batman v Superman. I could be wrong, but I, I just feel like it it's is interesting. I, it, but yeah. it is, it's, it, I think it's a confidence thing. And we have to remember, I think we saw uh, Avengers Age of Ultron maybe two to three weeks before the movie came right. out. And they would have done that with Force Awakens, except for the they didn't want any spoilers to get right. out. But I think maybe with episode eight, maybe, I don't know what's in it, what kind of secrets and spoilers are in there. Maybe they'll do that one early. I don't know. But the Disney slash Marvel has been doing this a lot lately. When they're confident in something like a Jungle Book yeah. or Civil War, they're going to let the press see it early. They let, you know, we, we did a non-spoilers review that, that's up on our site right now. And they let us do that. And, and the embargo lifted like pretty quickly. There was a fan screening for Civil War on Thursday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there is like they want everyone to see this movie. They want people talking about it because I think uh, now well, the thing, the negative part is that there's going to be a lot of spoilers. Yeah. There are a lot of ball bags that are running around <laughs> saying like, oh, I got to I'm going to tell you I'm going to let you know like so and so this happens, this happens. And that sucks. You know, yeah. that, but that's going to happen no matter what. And whether or not you choose to go and look and or avoid the internet, that's that's another situation. But I think that they want to get the word out there because they want they again the confidence in the movie. They want to know they know that both critics and fans love it, so they put it out there. Wendy, what do you think? I honestly don't think it's sort of like this Batman v. I honestly am so tired of everybody comparing Batman v Superman versus Marvel, you know, movies. I don't think it's that at all. I think it's the studio watched it. And they are so confident and so happy with the result that they're like, let's just put it out early. And also, don't forget, this is the first Marvel movie from Disney, not counting Deadpool because that was Fox, to come out this year. So maybe they want to just kick off the year with a bang. Like, look what we have now right. and look, this is what you have to look, to look forward to. Right. All right. What's next? <clears throat> All right. CJ Roja writes, Dear Collider, big fan all the way from... Santiago, Santiago, Chile. Keep up the great work on the greatest show in the whole wide world. My question regards to Kingpin, who appears in Daredevil, happens to be one of Spider-Man's biggest villain in the comics. Do you think that there exists the possibility of including him in Spider-Man Homecoming? Marvel has a tendency to use lackluster villains. I think it would be great to have Spider-Man take on the Kingpin in his solo outing. It would also be something new that none of the previous Spider-Man movies have done. Are there any other characters from Netflix that you would like to bring into the MCU? Un abrazo fuerte y thanks and keep up the great work. I don't believe that Kingpin <laughs> 
will make an appearance. Uh, no, I don't think he's going to show up because I don't think that Kevin Feige and dude who's running Netflix are. You, you don't want. You don't want. Are they heads? I not not on record. I mean, I don't necessarily mm. know, but the, the reports of the fact that Feige wanted away from it and he got away from it, and they and Alan Horn everybody granted him. He's 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 running the film division, and I forget the dude's name who's running the TV division, and it's going to stay like that. And I understand. I mean, look, Daredevil uh, um, and King. I mean, excuse me, Kingpin and Spider Man ha- certainly had their cool runs, and um. I just don't know if it'll ever happen. Plus the fact that you're bringing in another component here, and that's Sony. Uh, mixing in now the, the Netflix division with Sony, and there's so much that they already have to do with the collaboration between Sony and Disney and Marvel that it's just, it's just too much. And they've got a lot of other characters that they're focusing on now with the uh, rumors that possibly Michael Keaton's going to be playing Vulture, so they're going to be focusing on that. Um, and then isn't Craven uh, supposed to be in it as, as well? Uh, I'm not too sure. But yeah, what Vulture and Craven? I don't know. Yeah. I don't- it's rumors. <laughs> rumors. Rumors. There's rumors. So I mean, there's all there's all this stuff already. There's a lot of villains that they haven't used in the film world too that I don't think they're going to cross over. Plus, there's too much that they're doing right now w- with the Punisher and and more that they're going to do in that world. They're setting up such a great world and atmosphere on Netflix. They're going to stay there. It's also a rated R v- world that they live in, and, and it's you're never going to get a, a Spider-Man rated R movie, and you yeah. never should get a Spider-Man rated R movie. So I just don't see Kingpin ever following up there. Yeah, and also like you said. Spider-Man is this co-production between Marvel and Sony. It's like they would sooner bring Kingpin into a solely owned Marvel property first, but I don't want to see it because the the tone and atmosphere is totally different. I, I actually want... It's weird because like the whole big thing about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything, and they're like, all these universes are the same. It's all the same universe. They're all shared. Da, 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 da. Cool, you can see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff. But I actually like the Netflix being their own thing yeah. because it is darker and it, it's a different tone and I don't want to see Kingpin in there with Spider-Man. I and mean, we've all seen Civil War, and, and the tone of that Spider-Man is does not mix yeah. with Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. It just doesn't. And so if he brought brought him in, I just I, I kind of would be like, then when he comes back to Daredevil, I'd be like, oh, really? Yeah, it wouldn't work. You know, if if they owned Deadpool. Yeah. It will work a little yeah. bit. Um, even then, the humor is, is a little bit more comedic than it, what it is in Daredevil. But, yeah, I just don't see it happening. Uh, all right, what's next? All right, next one comes from Sage Rodrigo from Tampa, right? Hey, guys, if there's one thing you could change about the Star Wars prequels, what would it be? Thanks, guys. <laughs> there's a thing called all of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the beauty of this question. Yeah. The question is, what one thing would you change? I would change. I would make Obi Wan the uh, protagonist of the entire trilogy. Oh. Really? Yeah, I'd make him. I... The, uh, I'd make him the protagonist of the entire movie, and I think that there, that's that is the or even having a protagonist in. There's no protagonist in the trilogy. It's who who's who's the one who is the who's the lead of there there isn't one it's like it might be anakin at one point it might be obi-wan at one point it might be qui-gon at one point it might be yoda at one point you don't know whose whose story it is and i think that that was one of the biggest things i'd like to i think it could have been obi-wan's story of uh, and and on and originally in this in the first script Qui-Gon was part of the council. He wasn't a main. He wasn't Obi-Wan's um, master. He was just a guy in the council. He should have kept it that way. He should have been Obi-Wan the whole time, maybe looking for a Padawan, and then through that finds a, a an older mm-hmm. Anakin Skywalker, and then thinks he can train him as well as Yoda, as said in Return of the Jedi. I thought I could train him as the same way Master Yoda instructed me. Um, and then you see kind of the downfall of that, and you have Obi-Wan's kind of relationship and why. There was just so much more they could have done if they had a protagonist. Yeah, I, I think that's, that would be pretty cool. I, I just, for me personally, there's yeah, there's so many things that you could change that yeah. could fix it. There's not one thing that you'd be like, oh, just change that, and then all of a sudden the movies are great again. Um, I, I'd have to say, other than... than uh, than Obi Wan, the acting, the acting just change the acting, yeah, yeah, needs to be better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for a lot of the scenes could have been more emotional. There was no chemistry between Natalie Portman and Hayden Christensen. You know, like, but would you change the acting though, or would you change the directing? Because that's all. That's all stemming back to. Well, Lucas. I mean, yeah, I mean that I, the directing though encompasses so much of mm. it that the direction could have changed a lot of different components of yeah. it. So I think that one's too easy to just be like, oh, change the directing. That would be like a whole different movie. So 
without cheating like that, I would have to say the acting. All right, but that's still direct. If you if you change, if you use one thing, if you could change one thing, that's the director. That's one thing. Yeah. You get the I director mean, The director, director would change so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the whole point. I'm just saying that, that's too much of a cheat, right? <laughs> Not really. You're making, oh, I mean, you're man. turning, if you take that one guy, you, if you have Lucas more as like a consultant, then you take someone, whether it be a Steven Spielberg or whoever it is, and put him in there in the forefront, you have a different trilogy all yeah, well okay if i could choose that i would choose that yeah. but if it's solely just one aspect I, I, I would choose acting wendy what would you choose i would choose i don't want jar jar yeah and just better dialogue better writing because some of those lines were seriously cringeworthy i don't know why you keep talking about my writing uh, <laughs> you're breaking my heart <laughs> what's what's next <laughs> andy writes hey guys love the show and have been watching for years my question is based on your interviews from the past until now You've obviously interviewed more people associated with the MCU as opposed to the DCU. Are your reactions and criticisms more or less in favor of those you've had the pleasure of meeting in person? I've never seen a bad review of someone's movie you've talked to on the show. Thanks. Dennis? Well, mm. let's start with the last part first. You've never seen a bad review of someone we've talked to on the show. That's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, Transporter. Yeah, Transport. We had the, the, the actress that came in from Transport. Very nice lady. He did not like the movie. I think John put it on his like top worst of last year of his life. Yeah, <laughs> there's been plenty of uh, of people we've interviewed that we didn't really care for their movies. Uh, but the reason I chose this question is to dispel the notion that somehow that we are biased towards Marvel, and the evidence of that is, hey, you guys have had James Gunn, Kevin Feige, Chris Pratt, <clears throat> Russo brothers on twice. Ah, obviously these guys are in the tank. For Marvel. <laughs> now, the reason why this is ridiculous is, do you think that we here are turning down interviews with Zack Snyder, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot? We are not. The only reason we have those guys is because they were offered to us. If, if anyone from the DC Cinematic Universe wants to come on to our show and be interviewed, we are totally open absolutely for that. yeah and and going back to that especially like on schmoes we've been interviewed people that we haven't liked them many times like i had the writer of pan on my show um who this is last one with yeah oh. and who and i i mean i i was taking shots of that movie on thursday um and the guy was the nicest guy in the world and i think he's the guy who's right and he's a funny guy and he was and he's writing i think he's writing wonder woman and i but I destroyed the movie, and I can see it's a terrible movie. It was a terribly written movie, and he wrote it. Um, <laughs> but it's it's also we still want to talk to people. We still want to have you know those conversations with people. And it's also what Dennis said. You got to remember something though too. We're in a younger stage here at Collider with what we've been doing over the last month too, and that we we are we do we reach out to studios and let them know that the shows are open to people to come in, and then the studios say, hey, well, we have this person available, this person. Available. This lady right here is crushing it with guests. Like you look at we had Ratchet and Clank, um, the guys from from that's that's a really funny interview. You should check that out. Um, we, right. We've had Charlton Copley, Copley from uh, Hardcore and Henry, that, and, 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 and and really Wendy should be getting a lot of the credit too. But she go, no, you should because you go. I mean, she's the one. She's like our liaison with the studio. So blame her because she's getting she's getting paid off that's by right. Disney. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, she's the one that they, they said like, hey, do you want Henry Cavill? That hack? Yeah. No. Uh, no. You guys, she, if I could have Henry Cavill in studio, believe you me, he yeah. would. Yeah, everybody here. else will be gone. Yeah, yeah you should. Leave just yeah. Wendy and Harry Cavill things. Yeah, but so it's 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 a silly notion for sure. But look, that's not to say that there won't be because it's funny. Like I would hadn't even said this is I'm telling you guys this on the air. I actually went to a screening the other night and was talking to a Warner Brothers executive that we should all we're all going to get on the phone with and possibly have lunch with to discuss more Warner Brothers people yeah. coming in here, which we welcome. Please, yeah. are you coming out with Jason Momoa <laughs> in here? Yes, please. Yeah, Ezra so, Miller. Yes, it, and and. I'll tell you, even if, like, so look, Doctor Strange comes out and we get Benedict Cumberbatch yeah. or we get Derrickson in here, right? And we don't like it. I know me and I know you guys. Well, we're I already like it. You're say you don't like the I was already like, I didn't, not that I didn't like the trailer. I just thought it was all right. I thought it was decent, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And I already got crap for that. But right. I mean, I just, I think it's funny this notion that we're turning down right. these, like, big stars. Oh, no, Ben Affleck. We, we don't want to talk about them. yeah yeah i think that, maybe people just don't know that it's a it's a call from the studio who offers them to us yes. as opposed to us uh saying Reaching oh out, yeah right, we're not yeah. gonna have henry cavill it's like they gotta let maybe us we should first. take it as a compliment that people think we're that big right we're just like <laughs> oh, no we're getting just, there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right what's next off. kyle gumpert writes hello collider family getting to the point 
What's wrong with product placement? I realize that Transformer has way too much, but I don't see a real problem. Doesn't it help to make the movie seem more real if that's what they're going for? Thanks and bring on the filthy. I think product placement's ridiculous. <laughs> I wish we were sponsored by Sparklets. Um, no, uh, it, it's it. There's you have to have product placement. You have it's it's a matter of how you do it. Yeah. Like when you're doing it, like Michael Bay <laughs> in Transformers with, oh look, a flying Bud Light truck. Let me take a swig. <laughs> and then there was what was it, the movie recently? I can't. Remember, it was just like a full on car commercial. I can't remember what the hell movie it was. It was just like right in your face, just a car commercial, and it's like. Be a little subtle. I get you got you have to do it. That's how you pay the bills. That's how you get. That's how you're able to get some more money for future projects and stuff. So you got to do product placement. You have to. But there are ways to do it very subtle to make it look like it's part of the real world. Because guess what? There are Baskin Robbins out in the world when you're driving down a street and it happens to be in the background while you're talking. Great. And then do it that way. It's just when it's really like smash over the head. Unless they do it in a comedy. Sometimes they do it in a comedy where they're like an Austin Powers yeah. or something like. Then it's like yeah. This this is our sponsor and we're throwing it right in your face because that's the joke. I love when they do that. So, but I get you, you absolutely need sponsorship. Yeah. I echo, echo your sentiments. I, I think I have no problem with product placement. Yeah. The reason why I, I harp on the Michael Bay transformers is it is not subtle. You had the Bud Light <laughs> truck where he takes a swig and not only that you had the beats, the, uh, the beats by Dre, like right, speaker system right. it just comes out of nowhere it needs to be organic it needs to fit into the story i have no problem with it like you know if we got a sponsorship i'm not going to say oh yeah we're going to turn it down like we 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 need to, some money to like help things keep going so but we're not going to sit there like every day and just be like hey by the way you know this show is sponsored <laughs> by nuka cola like it's, it, that's just not subtle, but if we are doing a show and we're sponsored by someone, we're drinking out of whoever the hell is sponsoring us, Coke, Pepsi, whoever soft drink, I, I don't think there's, there's a problem with that. No, no, it's just, it's just it's all in how it is set up. Mm -hmm. All right, Wendy, what's next? Brandon Smith writes, first off, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to bring us such an amazing and infor informative movie review show. Now, I was curious about your thoughts on the new Netflix TV series I was going to begin, scream, begin streaming called Star Wars Fury of Maul. I haven't seen any marketing for it up to this first trailer and was curious if you saw it, and if so, what are your thoughts or feelings on it? Keep bringing the filthy. You have not been led on to the April Fool's joke, my friend. <laughs> no such series. Ain't happening. Uh, I, I, I would have been a nice thing. Would have been great to have that series. I think that because of the fan film that kind of came out, uh, I think there was a, f a big joke that was coming out on April Fool's that that was happening. Then there was another April Fool's thing that IGN had done as well, too. Um, there is no plans for a Netflix series right now. I am not happy about that. I would think I think that Star Wars is absolutely right for a Netflix series. I think you could put a Night's Tale Republic there um, and you could really tell some old stories and set that up the same way that they're doing with with Daredevil and Jessica Jones um, you could do some side stories in the Star Wars universe that would live in Netflix I think it's perfect but as of right now there's no Darth Maul series yeah I think that that teaser trailer he's talking about it was the IGN one it came out on April Fool's it was very well done but you know if you know anything you just see it you're like that's not real it's it just because they would have announced something yeah. they would have said something there would have been rumblings about casting and whatnot and and so having you know that just drop out of nowhere just it just doesn't happen what a bunch of jerks his friends are though you know like he's saying hey guys yeah uh, how about this series like you know what you should write into collider all that <laughs> you know like that bunch of jerks yes uh, wendy what do you think you think we're ever going to get a star wars netflix series well i mean maybe disney's seen kind of the response from this little april fool's joke and say oh maybe there's something there for netflix and darth maul there's room yeah well the problem with the darth maul now too is is where where his arc goes because of rebels with rebels but that's not to say that they couldn't do something in between that time. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think that for me, I, I, if I was ever given the opportunity to work at, at Lucasfilm, when I was working at Lucasfilm, I would say, I would be like, hey, anything that you guys want to do, yes, let's do a Game <laughs> of Thrones type show set in the Old Republic. It is ripe. You can just, you can make so, it's a thousand years before any of the events we know. There's no rules. You know, any, we can make up anything we want to that are going to lead up to the events a thousand years later. We can have the Sith army. We can have the Jedi army. There's so much we can do there. Um, so that's what I hope happens. But I don't know. I might be just be praying to 
the sky. Mm. Well, well, you never know. I mean, Don't Netflix up, is doing so well with the Marvel Universe, and obviously Disney may be looking at it. I like, know. Yeah, hey, I know. maybe maybe we should, you know, spend a little money and get a little Netflix series going. Well, remember they have all those they have all those episodes for a lot of you guys don't realize that when we didn't have when Lucas was, was working on a live action show and he was working on it, I think with some of the people from um, Battlestar Galactica and there's apparently like over a hundred scripts of finished scripts that they were going to do for this series it took place like I think like in the underworld uh, in Star Wars and I think that there are a lot of rumors that, that they, they were going to produce some of those and Kathleen Kennedy I think at one point said that they were certainly looking at looking at them so who's to, I remember I remember when I was working at Silver like they I remember writers that were coming in saying that they had been in to meet with people to go over these scripts and some have written scripts there there are finished scripts by professional writers like yeah that. i mean I, I wouldn't hold out my hopes now that disney owns star wars but they don't but lucas but they own lucas film they're all no lucas no no, no but i'm talking about because of the tone because george lucas said that they were supposed to be deadwood meets sopranos style you know and yeah. i just can't see that coming out i would love for it to happen I just don't see it happening. You don't think so, like Underworld style. I mean, they get oh, they man. go they go dark on Disney XD on yeah. some of the sh- on some of the episodes of Rebels. They go dark mm-hmm. and like there's some of the st- I, I I think once you see episode eight though, you might change your tune too Maybe. because Ryan Johnson's going dark. <laughs> like that's it, we're getting an adult Star Wars movie. This it's going to go away from the seeing how dark Jungle Book was. Man, right? oh yeah, it's man. true. It's true, man. Like there like there's no way you take a like a four or five year old to see Jungle Book. Oh. Scared forever. I almost think Jungle Book might be more scary than Star Wars for kids. Um, yeah, because tigers are scary. Yeah, and, this, and they this. look realistic in the movie. Yeah, they and then Shere Khan's a real prick. Yeah. All right, what's <laughs> the awesome, uh, last one? He was great. Yes, he was. Um, Michael Thomas writes, Hey, oh, Collider not Crew. Not yet. <laughs> Almost there. Michael Thomas writes, Hey, Collider Crew. A friend and I started our own movie news website early last year, and we wanted to ask you this question. We wanted to know how will we be able to get our press passes. It's difficult to write movie reviews when you watch the film the day of release, and it's extremely annoying knowing you're not going to get the views because most people would have already seen the film. We're willing to do whatever it takes. We just need to know what it takes. Thanks, and keep up the great work. Uh, fantastic question. And some, you know, yesterday I was working, uh, and someone we were talking about just kind of reminiscing, and they asked if I ever snuck into a movie, and I was like, many times. And the reason why was in 2008 when Mark and I started doing movie reviews. We weren't pressed. We weren't accredited. We weren't certified by Rotten Tomatoes. We we weren't getting press screens. We weren't doing any of that stuff. We had the money. We had, right. We had to buy. We had to buy a ticket for a movie. And if we wanted to review all the movies that were coming out that week, we'd have to start at nine in the morning, jump into the next one, jump into the next one, and then the next one. If there were four movies coming out that week. Wow kill it in one day and that's what we had to do um so i understand working hard getting it done but the main thing is building an audience building viewership i mean that's that's how you're going to do it because the studio the, the way that i eventually did get the studios to start sending us is that we started going on the adam carolla podcast and with that it brought some merit to it like oh you're reviewers on adam carolla's podcast okay oh you have x amount of subscribers now okay great then 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 you should be able to, you should come and you should come check out our movie and they start inviting you now not everybody's going to go on the adam carolla podcast and and not everybody's on youtube to get an amount of subscribers so what you do is you just need to get your blog or your website out there whatever way you can whatever marketing way you can whatever social media way you can now whether that's facebook or whether you or if you're posting uh pictures of yourself or getting creative to to promote your site it's a business it's marketing you got to market yourself too because there are a lot of there are a lot of blogs out there there are a lot of websites out there there are a lot of uh of youtube channels out there that review movies now so you have to really put in the work to let them know that you're out there and that people are watching your stuff because they want to know the studios and the press want to know that they're letting you in because I know people are going to be watching or reading your reviews. It's great that you're reviewing stuff, but if you just started a website, what does it benefit the studio or to let you in when they can let someone else in who's got thousands more readers or viewers mm-hmm. than you do? Yeah, and also with with uh, the following that you're talking about, you have to make connections with, yep. with the studio people and, and letting them know you know who you are and what you do and the better your relationships with them are the more likely they're going to add you on to to these press screenings i mean it's i don't know where this guy lives but obviously it's a lot easier to do that in los angeles and new york i don't know how press screenings work in other other cities like 
do they have one in like one major city and everyone like f- from like all over has to like come and show up? I think up that's for? what happens because our, our mutual friend uh, Chris Stuckman, yeah. who mm-hmm. has also um, been doing this for a little while, like he he there's particular he gets the emails of when he's got to drive out and I mean and credit to him like even same thing going back he before he was on press screens he would drive like I think like an hour away where he lives in Ohio to get to those screenings wherever he found out early before he had the following that he has now of how to get there and introducing himself mm-hmm. it's like you said it's connections it's it's putting yourself out there and letting people know that you're a voice in this space yeah John's for uh, Star Wars we saw him at our screening so John's is from Seattle Jeremy mm-hmm. John's and he flew down to watch the screening of Star Wars right yeah. you know they just didn't have anything over in over there yeah um okay I know yeah. just uh just because come from Miami and stuff like that and I used to work uh, in college kind of with like the movie program Mm -hmm. and we would actually get advanced screenings for like uh, we actually get into press screenings with the press and it's a very small amount of tickets I think we only had like 20 to give out you know per time and that maybe be also a good way. I don't know if that even helps, but that that was how we got into early movies. It is a great point though, too. Like find out where like the f- the fan screenings are, or find out like where it, like and it goes back to Dennis's point. Um, studio reps and and find out who it is because even if they don't let you in, in the beginning, find out who they are and, and establish a relationship with them. Just kind of going back to what you were saying, to where it's if you know find out where they are like how if you know a, like tweet at people if, if there's if you're not in LA if you're at if you're somewhere in a, in a different part of, of the country or in the states and find out who some of these reviewers are that you know that are in your state tweet at them maybe they'll answer you back or who the person is to contact maybe they won't but it's always reach out to people that's that's how you find the best information all right last one all right this last one comes one this from <laughs> Mark Overview writes hello crew my question to the panel is this what was the single film that got you started on your career path that has led you to where you are now? And how did it influence your decision? Thanks for taking my question. I mean, you're going to get sick to death of me saying this, but it's always been Star Wars for me. I mean, it's like it's the movie that it, it made me believe that these things, that and Superman the movie, it made me believe that these type of things are possible to do in the movies and to be, and I just, you know, as far as what I'm doing now, like I, remember I did stand up comedy for like 10 to 12 years and I was my, I was doing seven shows, uh, seven days a week, two shows a night. I was, I was doing colleges and, and I was, and then I was also, when I got back, I was working at a production company as well. So it's like, I wanted to combine the two of them. Um, so I wanted to do comedy and, and to be able to just talk freely about movies. And then YouTube, when I came along in 2005, and then I was able to kind of discover in 2007, there's not one particular movie that set me down this path that I'm on here. So that's why I go back to Star Wars, because it's more about the movie that started your love and why you wanted to even watch movies. That's the one for me. Um, but there are tons of movies out there that you just you watch and you say, OK, this is a particular movie that maybe I'd, I'm analyzing it in a way that I never thought I would before, and maybe I should kind of talk about that somewhere. I see that happens to a lot of people. For me, it's a, actually two movies, and it has nothing really to do with the, the movies themselves. I, and I like both of these movies very much, but Clerks and Reservoir Dogs. Mm. They're two movies that, for once, that when I watched a movie, I was like, you know what? These are good movies and they did not cost a lot of money. You don't need like millions and millions of dollars to, to get it. You get, you know, a good script, get some good actors in there and just and put it together. Like and then on top of that later, for me the biggest influence was just kind of the digital revolution of everything, the terms of of being able to shoot digitally, editing, editing right. digitally, and now distrib- distributing on YouTube now is a big thing too. Yeah. So I think that's probably a bigger thing than any single film is just the, the access that we can have now without millions of dollars or even tens of thousands of right. dollars. Wendy, what, was, what movie got you uh, down this path? Well, this is kind of a weird way of it. Like, this was not the career path I had envisioned when I came out to LA to be an, an actress. So what... I really was more of like into the performance arts, so it was musicals, and like The Sound of Music was the first musical I ever saw, and then I was like, I wanna do that, and then that kind of evolved into acting, which then when I came out here, I just really got immersed in this um, comic book movie world, and The Dark Knight kind of did it Mm. for me. After that, I was like, oh my God, I wanna see more of this stuff. And Mm. then it kind of evolved into where I am today. 
Well, there you go. And you guys evolved right back here watching us on Mailbag. What a fun show it was today. It was great to talk to all of you guys. And I'd like to thank the panel today that helped me answer your questions. And that would, of course, be Dennis Zhang. Dennis, where can I find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Uh, don't forget to check out our interview with the Russo brothers that's on the channel right now. And also, we did a non-spoilers review for Captain America Civil War. Wendy Lee, where can I find you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. For me, Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, please check out our weekly Star Wars show, which is Collider Jedi Council every Thursday, the most recent episode with myself, Mark Ellis, Mark Riley, and John Campy is up on the channel right now. And the Josh McCuga Clark Wolf battle went up yesterday. Make sure you check that out for the movie trivia showdown. Things are heating up here in the showdown. Lots of fun matches going down. And we are also taking some more questions tomorrow on Mailbag. So watch it, yo. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.